Hi everybody, I'm Sterling. I've been giving classes for pure linguistics for a long time now, maybe about three years. I don't remember exactly. But anyway, I was honored when I was asked by Pure Linguistics to write and record a series of documents and videos talking about possible ways to present the technical details of grammar in our English lessons. Obviously, there's more than one way to teach grammar, and I'm going to talk about the approaches that have worked well for me. So, here we go with my personal best on that. In this first video, I'm just going to outline a foundation and talk about a general approach that can be useful with serious students who already have a good understanding of the basic concepts of grammar in their own native Spanish. Depending on the student's understanding of grammar, it's sometimes really helpful in your teaching to include a comparison of English grammar with Spanish grammar. It's something they can really identify with. For example, with each verb tense, I'd like to present the name of its equivalent tense in Spanish and then talk about and give examples of similarities or differences in situations when that tense is used in both languages. That's illustrated pretty clearly with examples in a later video. The first one is the video that talks about present simple versus present continuous, and that's coming soon in this sequence. So what I'm saying should be clearer with that video, but I'm just introducing the idea here. Now, why English teaching textbooks and English courses never suggest comparing the grammar of English with the grammar of Spanish, and why they always talk about grammar as if it's a topic that only belongs to English, I've never understood this. Grammatical rules are the foundation of every language, and grammar is the commonality between languages. If you speak a language, any language, you use grammar. Every time you speak, you're using the same grammar as we use in English. Grammar is grammar. It doesn't belong to a certain language. So, so obviously, deep down, as a speaker of your own language, you understand grammar, even if, even if you can't explain it. So, that's important, even if you can't explain it. On that basis, a really helpful objective is to teach how any set of English grammar that you're teaching works in both Spanish and English. Personally, I've found that comparing the grammar of a language I'm learning with the grammar of the language I grew up with, the one I'm most intimately familiar with, I found this to be extremely helpful and especially with verb tenses. So there's a lot of focus on the commonality between English and Spanish in the way I like to look at things. Now the downside of doing this comparison, the downside is that comparing the similarities and differences between verb tenses in both languages, it's only useful to students who already have a basic understanding of Spanish grammar. Unfortunately, we have too many students who do not understand basic Spanish grammar, in spite of the fact that they speak fluent Spanish, and who really hate learning about grammar. Yet, they want to learn English, and that's their own self-defeating situation, unfortunately. So, we have to figure out how to deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. But going back to the positive side, if your student does already recognize what you mean when you use the name of a particular verb tense, for example, that's great. Comparisons with Spanish verb tenses will be helpful for these students, and they'll be several steps ahead of those students who aren't really interested in learning grammar. 
the big challenge we all have is that we we really have to address a lot of disinterest in grammar and like it or not grammar is really the basis of languages if you get it you'll learn the language if you don't it's going to be difficult so if you understand if you could get to the point of understanding how grammar works in your own language in a way that you can explain it then it becomes a lot easier to apply these principles when you're learning this new language English. So I'm uh, I'm going to cut it off here. I hope you find these general concepts really helpful. In the next video, I'm going to talk about a practical foundational concept that we all really need to review, and I think textbooks give it too little attention, and that's teaching the concept of first person, second person, and third person subjects and pronouns. That makes learning about conjugation and verbs so much easier if you, if you get that. So that's the next thing I'm going to talk about. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.